Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so happy to be on today on Tuesday, March 22nd. I think it's your Tuesdays. We like to just hop on and give you some um, great pieces of advice and just some information from different autism experts or professionals in the field. And today, we have a really unique topic. Um, we're going to be talking about nutrition, but also about feeding therapy and picky eating. And I have some really neat things to share with you. Um, my son, personally, um, really was a picky eater. Uh, he only ever ate carbs, and that was it. He couldn't eat any sort of hard vegetables unless it was cooked, and that was even later on. Usually, it was just crackers, chicken nuggets, burgers, you know, all those different kinds of things. Um, and now he just eats everything. We're actually quite amazed. He eats more than my neurotypical daughter in regards to his variety. Um, oh, just just check my mic. Hopefully you can hear me. It says that I'm unmuted. So let me just mute myself and unmute. There we go. Can you hear me now? Let me know in the comments if you guys can hear. Yes. Okay. So I'm not sure um, how much you heard, but I'll just briefly restate. So today we're going to be talking about nutrition as well as healthy eating. Um, and I was just sharing how my autistic son, when he was younger, all he ate was carbs, just nuggets, bread, you know, burgers, things like that, fries, like meaty fried, anything with carbs, that's what he ate. He could not actually eat um, any raw vegetables. He would choke. Um, I do have to tell you, as of, I think it was last week, um, and it's either Monday or Tuesday, he officially ate his first raw carrot and did not um, gag or choke and completely swallowed it. And in fact, he thought it was really pleasant. He had it with Caesar dressing um, and he's totally overcome that sensory issue. Now, carrots were a big deal for us because anytime he would eat a carrot, you know, he just couldn't take it um, sensory wise and, and he would throw up. So he's progressed that way. So little steps all the time. He does have a wide variety in his diet, but just raw carrots we could never conquer. And as of last week, we did. So super happy about that. Um, so I wanted to share with you a little bit about nutrition. I'm not going to go too much into it, um, but I'm actually going to go more into picky eating um, in regards to sensory issues and, th and things like that. Um, because I, I did post about nutrition on our Instagram account, if you follow us at Autism Advocate Parenting Day. Um, and one of the comments was like, that's great if like, I can get my kids to eat all this nutritious food and how nutrition plays a big role with autism, but if they don't eat it, how are they going to get that? So I wanted to make sure that I address that today. So I'm going to start with nutrition. Um, and just share with you a couple of brief things from an article that was published this month in the March 2022 issue of Autism Advocate Parenting Magazine. And it was by Crystal Jordan. She has the website Food for Thought. Um, and four is spelled like the number, so F-O-U-R. Um, and she holds a bachelor's degree in integrated studies um, that encompasses nutrition, health, and family studies. Um, and she teaches caregivers why proper nutrition works for their unique child and how to make proper nutrition possible for picky eaters as well as for low communicators. Oh, it says I'm going in and out with my mic. Maybe I will move over so you guys can hear me a little bit better. I think our internet access is pretty good, but let me try moving over to my desk. There we go. Okay, so I want to share with you a little bit about what she shares on nutrition and foods that you should avoid. Just kidding, that's great. Sorry, we got this light for a um, So anything that enhances uh, inflammation throughout the body or aggravates a digestive dysfunction or aggravates a digestive dysfunction should be avoided. So keep in mind that digestive issues um, are up to 65% more common in autistic children than in their neurotypical peers. So some of the things that she suggests avoiding, one is soy. So any kind of soy products, they're commonly overprocessed to the point of being intolerable for the body. Um, it can also block mineral, mineral absorption and contain phytoestrogen compounds, which may be linked to increased susceptibility to several types of cancers within specific populations. So avoiding soy would be one. 
Um, also avoiding artificial sweeteners. Um, they can overall promote poor body function and increase inflammation in the body. Um, and they also range in their level of safety. So while some are semi-natural, she explained, um, they've all been sort of modified and processed in a lab. Um, so some are natural and some are a little bit more questionable. Um, she also suggests avoiding dairy, which is kind of hard for our family because even though we are a gluten-free um, family, we haven't gotten the casein part yet um, and cut that out, but we are working on it. Um, but this includes all animal milk, cheese, yogurt, um, due to its infl inflammatory proteins, dairy can cause a harmful immune response that is not always detected. Lactose is a carbohydrate that is found in milk. Um, and when this carbohydrate binds with the protein in milk, an inflammatory response is triggered. Casein, um, a dairy protein, can also lead to inflammation and may be associated with increased risk of autoimmune disease and more severe allergies and infections. So we're working on the dairy part. We do know about casein. We know that we should be avoiding it as much as possible, but sometimes you have to take those little tips first. Um, she also talks about any foods high in glutamate. Um, so glutamate occurs naturally within the body and in many foods. However, an excess of this amino acid can contribute to many problems. In particular, it can affect the brain and result in headaches, anxiety, depression, and mood swings. So foods that are high in glutamate include monosodium glutamate, so MSG, many artificial sweeteners, and soy products. Um, and high levels can also be found in tomatoes, mushrooms, cheese, Parmesan cheese, processed meat, yeast, and cow's milk. So those are just some of the foods. Talks a little bit about uh, some other areas of food that we should avoid as well. Um, but I just wanted to highlight those. And you're probably thinking, okay, what the heck do I feed my child? And we're going to get into that. Um, other things that you might want to avoid are whole foods as well. And I'll go into the details of that just to explain why. Um, so, you know, what can we feed our kids? Obviously, vegetables and fruit and organic meats, natural fats, such as coconut oil, olive oil, nuts and seeds are really good um, for the body and for our autistic children. But sometimes it can be really hard to feed our kids fruits and vegetables, or at least it was for my son, especially when he was little. Um, and even up to a week ago where he could not ingest a raw carrot. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about another article that we produced. Um, called Feeding Therapy for Children with Autism. And the article was written by Erica Furness. I'm trying to see if she has a website where you can go to, but she's a pediatric occupational therapist and the clinical coordinator for Galvin Therapy Center in Warrensville Heights, Ohio. Um, and she really works with clients zero to 21 years of age, addressing self-regulation, sensory processing, um, feeding, motor delays, um, ASD, as well as cognitive delays. She wrote this incredible article, and I really want to share. Like my son went through feeding therapy when he was little, and it worked wonders for us. Like like I said, he was a very restricted diet. Now he's like raw sushi and everything. It's crazy, but feeding therapy really really served us. Now I'm not going to say it's going to you know help every child, but it is something that would be wise to look into if your child is very restricted in their diet or has um, you know sensory issues with being able to ingest certain foods. Um, and she gave us a great article just talking about some, some things that you can do with your child um, to help them to progress um, towards being able to consume more variety of foods as well as to help lessen the sensory issues with consuming certain foods. Um, so some of the tips that she, she gives, and I'm going to get into you know what you do with the food in a little bit here, but she talks about regulating senses before mealtime. Um, so even before your child gets to the table, um, you want to make sure that they're regulated enough in order to tolerate sitting for the meal. So movement or heavy work tasks prior to sitting can help calm the body and organize the brain for the task ahead. Um, so trying activities like animal walks, swinging, jumping, or you know, going on a trampoline, uh, carrying a heavy tote bag, um, pushing or pulling, um, something heavy um, can really help to just you know, regulate the body prior to sitting down. Once sitting at the table, it's important um, It's important to be able to uh, make sure your child has the appropriate posture. So when the child is seated, uh, the table really should be at chest height so that the child's elbows and arms can reach the table. Um, and they should have a place to rest their feet so that they're not dangling. 
Um, and if your feet can't reach the floor, you kind of want to put a step tool underneath there or a cardboard box or a pile of books or, or something on the floor to keep them properly. So we want to address things like all these different areas, help their meal time um, be as best as possible, and then we're going to address the food part. So oral motor skills um, oftentimes can be a concern with a child with um, autism spectrum disorder. And so sometimes the reason eating can be so challenging is because Sometimes the child's mouth is not physically ready um, and the oral skills might be delayed. So signs of delayed oral motor skills include weak teeth or lips, frequently having their mouth open, um, or difficulty moving the tongue between the lips um, or from side to side and side to mouth. Um, so you can try out different motor activities throughout the day um, or as a warm-up to eating. And this might include, to give some great examples, um, vibrating in and around the mouth in short bursts blowing bubbles through a wand, filling a bowl with water, and if you want dish soap, and using a straw to just blow sudsy bubbles, um, blowing cotton balls um, or cereal pieces across the table with a straw, or shooting a preferred food from the mouth into a container or bowl. So <laughs> might be a little bit fun for the kid as well. Um, and you also want to make sure as a parent that you have positive food talks. Um, so she shares with that it's, that it's really important to help children adjust their language regarding regarding food um, and to not use negative words or phrases about food like yucky or gross. Um, they may say I can't try it or I hate it. Avoid putting any negative connotations whatsoever. Try to redirect them um, saying such phrases as I'm not ready to try that yet or maybe next time. Use neutral language about food and help the child focus on descriptive adjectives surrounding the taste, touch, smell, sight, and sounds of food. Um, you can word, use words such as small, medium, or large to describe the size um, of the smells and tastes. Think about different texture words to describe how the food looks, how it feels in our hands and our mouth. Um, for example, jello could look wiggly or a waffle could feel bumpy. Um, discuss the sounds foods makes, food makes when it falls apart. Um, or falls on the plate, or when your teeth bite into it. Um, use color shapes to describe how the food looks. This might just seem like, I don't know, it, as a parent, when I first went into feeding therapy, I'm like, okay, how is this going to work? How is this going to progress my child from, you don't eat anything except like fries and chicken nuggets and things like that, to actually progressing him and to open up his diet as well as to help him with what the situation that's going on with his mouth. But I was blown away that these little things really helped him to eventually progress. It took us probably about I don't know what it was, maybe a year, year and a half of like food school is what we called it for him. Um, it was like feeding therapy. Um and he was in this group with other little kids and kind of kind of they go up their arms and lift it and kiss it and do all these different things. And I just you know, as a parent, I was like, oh, it seems so strange. I don't know if it's going to work. But it really, really did help. Um, so she talks about in her article, the therapist talks about climbing the food staircase, you know, tolerating the food, being in the room with the food present, um, to the next going to the next letter, which is interacting with the food, and which is what I saw in my son's therapy. You know, they would play with the food, and that's okay. Um, smelling the food, and then touching the food or maybe it's tasting the food, licking it, or taking a bite and spitting it out. Like even these little things will progress you through the ladder to eventually consuming the food. Um, and I was really surprised at how, how well it worked. It took a long time and it took a lot of patience, but um, it really, really helped our family at least. Um, so she gives some examples about these different levels in the staircase and share a bit with you. I don't want to go over time, but it's going to make it short and sweet. Um, just give you a little bit of tidbits of what's available. Um, but she talks about how you can get your child to tolerate and interact with the food. And I love the tips that she gives because these are things you can do as a parent in your home. Um, obviously, you want to try to, you know, reach out and get food and therapy if that's something that your child needs. But there's things that you can do to start in the home. So um, tolerating and interacting with the food. Some examples are using your plate or napkin as a mouth and um, eating the food. So just pretending. Um, do rock a by baby with the food wrapped in a napkin. Um, use preferred foods to touch non-preferred foods. So pretend you are taking a soccer ball or a hockey puck into a bowl. Um, have one food slide down into another. You know, bang on the food like a drum. 
stir the food, um, drive one food to another, um, engage with different tools um, such as choppers, cookie cutters, peelers, um, as long as it's safe, and we'll make sure you're using safe equipment, um, cores, things like that, and you're supervising and helping your child. Utilize cocktail forks and teaspoon spoons to play with the food. You know, wear gloves to interact with the food, too. You can do that. Um, then you want to progress to smelling the food. So using different sized straws to blow the food around the plate or blow bubbles into the food if it's a liquid or puree. Pretend to smell a bouquet of flowers. Poke holes into the food to further release different odors. Um, and then you want your child to progress to touching the food. So build a tower or make a house out of the food and knock it down. Um, this was so foreign to me that we were going to like do all these things with these foods that you just wouldn't normally let your neurotypical child do. Like, stop playing with your food, eat your food, right? You want your child to do this as they're going through the food therapy. Pretend the food is a train or driving um, around the plate and add purees for mud or lakes that cars can drive through. Pretend the food is different animals, marching or swimming around. Play tug of war with your hands in the food. Paint fingernails or make tattoos on your hands with the food. So hopefully you guys are finding some of these things fun. And I know your kids will probably find um, enjoyment doing it, at least my son did. Um, go bowling with different types of food. Make watches or bracelets. Um, pretend to sneeze the food off your lips. Um, I don't even think I can get this creative as a parent with playing with your food. So I love that she just gives us all these ideas. Give kisses to the food. Uh, pretend the food is a lightsaber and fight each other. Tap the food on your teeth. Say knock, knock. And there's a whole list of other things and advice that she gives. Now she gets into the next staircase, which is tasting the food. So lick your lips after pretending the food is chapstick or lipstick. Pretend to be a snake or a lizard with a fast moving tongue to quickly touch the food. Lick the food as if it were a lollipop. Play hide and seek games with the food in your mouth. Try to guess where the food is hiding. Um, pretend to be a puppy or a kitten and lick the food off your plate. Draw pictures or roadmaps on your tongue with the food. Pretend the food is a passenger or on the train. Um, the tongue is the train. And then bring it to all the stations, front and side, teeth or cheeks. Um, to the food like a different zoo jungle animal. <laughs> pretend the food is a rocket leaving for out of space in your mouth and shoot it to a target. Um, so those are just some fun tips. I can tell you, like, not all of these, but a lot of these they did do in my son's feeding therapy. And, um, you know, they just did it little by little. Each, each week, it was a couple times a week. Um, and they would do, I just add a little bit more, and it really progressed them through. Um, and so I am definitely a fan of feeding therapy. Um, it's done wonders for us. I just wanted to share some tips for you as parents. If your child struggles to have a wide variety of foods or sensory issues, chewing, or swallowing, um, you'll definitely want to seek out um, support that can help you and occupational therapists um, can likely help with that and help them to develop those oral motor skills. Um, I want to mention in Autism Advocate Parenting Magazine, in our premium subscription, we have a nutrition and feeding um, section. Um, so we have different category sections. You can find all the articles on nutrition as well as feeding therapy. Um, and there's milestones in there, what your child should be able to do with their mouth at certain ages, um, and lots of information from top experts in the field, um, as well as autism professionals to help you as parents. So you can subscribe if you're interested in getting more information to help your child. There's lots of other um, areas of the magazine as well. We cover pretty much any topic possible in the field of autism. Um, and if we don't cover it, you just write into the magazine and we find an expert to cover it. And um, so we have a monthly, an annual, or a premium subscription. So definitely, if you're interested in subscribing, subscribe through Autism and Us. Autism and Us is an amazing charity. And 25% of the proceeds goes back to Autism and Us to further their charitable um, things that they do with their organization. So um, to do that, you can go to, it's right there on the screen, autismadvocatesmagazine.com forward slash, not backslash, forward slash, autism and us. And if you use the code autism and us, all capitals, all one word, um, you actually get a great discount on an annual or premium subscription. You only get a ton of extra freebies when you enter into your account. Um, lots of bonus material to help you out as a parent raising your child on the system. So I hope that helped you. We love to hop on every other Tuesday and just give tips and tricks. 
for those raising a child with autism to help you um, with either their behaviors and they're struggling with um, sensory issues, eating, whatever it might be. So um, if there's any topic you want us to cover in the future, be sure to comment below and we'll make sure we put it on the list. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And I hope you have a great day.